us at the bar, please. Welcome to Tavern Tales, a curated 5e Dungeons & Dragons adventure set in the tales of the Yawning Portal campaign module by Wizards of the Coast. Previously on Tavern Tales, Roga has returned, and our stone hammers have made it onto the island at the middle of the lake where the Fist of Dargeddon resides. Will they be able to claim it and defeat the Black Dragon, thus ending the adventure? Come sit down and drink with the enemy, raise a glass and toast to the enemy, and I'm not gonna do this on my own. Shabnagurath. What? I will do what you ask. Good. If. What? You promise to protect my family. No, you wear the gauntlet and I'll give you your heart's desire. But my heart's desire is with my family. Oh, you are so funny. You're such a bitch. Why don't you just You listen? hold Lucille higher than your family. No. I saw your heart. Maybe I did once. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that. That's a round. All right. Melusine. So can I see the dragon? Okay. So, in the water. Okay. So how many people are standing on top of the mountain? There's two people on top of the mountain right now. Okay. So well, yeah. it's not a mountain. It's a pile of gems. And Sorry. nobody in the water. Mm. I, I don't have electricity. I only have thunder wave and it doesn't really. Oh, it's Aww. just a thunder crash? Yeah. I'll just run up the hill and ready action to do a dissident whispers if I can, if the, dra- I can see the dragon within range. Okay. Absolutely. We're all almost there. I know. We're so close. <laughs> Tessicar. I book it up the hill. Oscar. Up the hill I go. (laughs) All right. The five of you are at the top of the hill. Yay. The dragon does not make an appearance. I'm going to put my hand on the gem and look over at everybody to indicate to do the same. Follow suit. Twin powers activate. That's my line. Sorry. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) All right. All of my players at the table have now reached out physical hands (laughs) towards their... Towards the <laughs> center of the table. <laughs> when you place your hands, the, like water, the gem begins to dissolve into water as it pours and pools away, revealing the fist of Dargeddon the Black, the gem encrusted gauntlet that he had forged using all of his hatred of the orcs. It lies before the five of you within reach. Tessicar bends all, down. All together, Melusine says. <laughs> Tessicar looks at you and picks up the gauntlet. <laughs> Wait. As, as do I at the same time. I don't know if it would be at the same time. Oh. Shall we roll oh. initiative? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty sure I came first. This is a surprise action because everyone at the table, including Chelsea, believe that Tessicar was the one who was supposed to bend down and take the gauntlet. I think it's Oscar, though. Right? That had always been the case. However, no one is going to suspect Fogram stooping in and grabbing it. Is that fair to say? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if Fogram dashes forward and grabs the gauntlet, that would be a surprise attack on your party members and catch them all untowards. I do seriously say all together. <laughs> Yes. Oh, uh, no, oh, that, that sounded lovely. Fine. Yes. All together. <laughs> but then Tessicar's already leaning forward and then Fogram's just swooping in and grabbing it. It is a surprise attack. And I'm not going to be cruel and story written to say that you don't have an opportunity once you see Fogram stooping in suddenly to catch it. But does that give you pause or does that make Tessicar try to grab it faster? As he sees Foggy reaching for it, there's just this little seed of rage that happens mm. in his core because he just something's not right and it, it angers Tessicar. So as soon as Foggy starts to reach it, Tessicar just shoves Foggy really hard on the shoulders to push him back as he's leaning forward. All right, well, that's a change out. in your action. So it would then become a roll off in this instance where you're going to attempt oh. to shove 
fog them away. I'll reach for it quicker then. Still a roll off. But it's further complicated because as you reach for the gauntlet, the dragon explodes out of the water to breathe acid on all of you. Is it a Winsters? No, you'd already changed your action to touching the gem. Yeah, and touching the gem. Does he roll for that attack? (laughs) No, you all will roll dexterity saving throws. But that's neither here nor there because that's just going to happen at the... What? We don't get a reaction. Reaction. Well, you'll make a saving throw. But what's more important is grabbing the gauntlet first. Mm. So who is grabbing the gauntlet first? Program. No. Sorry. I think it should be... Yeah. Please. Oscar. Yeah. Well, you actually never once told me you were doing anything. Yeah. I put my hand on it. You, you, you put your hand on the gem, which caused all of the water to oh. flow away. The, that gauntlet was down and deep inside it. As the water finished flowing away, the gauntlet fell to the gem encrusted oh, okay. ground. The five of you looked at it for a moment, and then two people reached down to pick to it up. To be fair, yes. I did say everybody all together, so I I know gone. you did. We were all there. <laughs> can I, with <laughs> having ill matter on my side can i sense that foggy is not necessarily doing this for himself and try to make block an inside him? check i'm gonna say it's fogger you need a level oh, that is one. that is a d12 <laughs> i didn't roll that for dc you mean <laughs> oh 14 that is barely enough to realize Fogram has dark intent right no not no. dark intent no way to spoil it you don't have dark intent. I don't have dark. Oh intent. my god! If you're if you're striving to collect this fist, for and you Shaxi. don't have dark intent. I don't have dark intent. <laughs> okay, what's your intent? One of my the things that I never get to say. What do we call them? Cliches. The cliches is absolute power corrupts absolutely. Right. So I'm not gonna do what Shub and I hate Shubzy. She's so pushy. Yes. Like, fuck her. Yes. So I was going to grab it and make sure it gets to Oscar. That's my Oscar. Intent. Yeah. All right. Okay. We're all going for the same thing. Yes. Because I was literally <laughs> going to throw it towards us. But I was trying to fuck with you guys. <laughs> yeah. I would be very careful with your intent there, Fogram. Yeah. Because as soon as you touch the gauntlet. That's what Shubsy wants. That's what Shubsy wants. Well, I don't know that. I know she's you so don't. She's so fucking. I hate her. <laughs> she's like the worst. She's girlfriend. the worst goat friend ever. So <laughs> with my insight. I go to block. Foggy. Oh yeah, it seems like Fogram's yeah. not acting with in, with pure intent because, and you don't even know it. Yeah, to be dark fair, forces. I, I don't know. Dark forces That's are manipulating fair. Foggy. Also, Fogram, you wouldn't have thought necessarily to reach. You know, just let Oscar grab it. You know, like, it's but he cool. wasn't grabbing it, so I was making because I exactly. don't want Tessa Car having it. Basically. <laughs> what the shit? Because <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't fully caught on the Paladin thing. I'm kind of like I thought you're That's still fair. with Shubzy. Fair. I miss yep. all that. I just see it's that only, you made your sister sad. That's which is true. All the time. Yeah. It's only me that really has sensed were, that something is. You definitely obfuscated everything at the beginning of the game so yeah. much. You have caused this to happen to yourself, Chelsea. <laughs> I have no insight into you. So. You see the insight roll off now. You have advantage because Eldeth can help you. You do not have advantage. You may roll your D20s. Wait, why did she get it? Because Eldith I... made the insight check oh, and Eldith's going to help her okay, with right. her foot, so kick sense. it or something like that, or just be like, no, Fogram, or say something. The Fair dragon! <laughs> Distraction! <laughs> okay, so all it takes is a, uh, a this PPP. is like a grab check. So you're going to use your proficiency bonus, yeah, which cancels each other out. And then yeah. you're going to use your strength or your dexterity bonus. Sucker. Oh. What's your total? What's your bonus there? I have a one on dexterity. What's your strength? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Zero. So good job. Yeah. F- Fogram is much more physically capable than you. What's your dexterity bonus? Dexterity is two and strength is five. All right. So. <laughs> I'm doing strength. <sighs> Beat to dub. It's not really a strength grab, actually, now that I really think about it. <laughs> it is assuredly a proficiency bonus weapon. I Okay, sure. Yeah, no, by by all means. Yeah, I, I'm level happy. Level the playing field. You know what? You can have it back. You oh. cannot have triple advantage. <laughs> <laughs> nice Roll try. your two D20s each on your dexterity checks. Whoever rolls higher wins in this instance, essentially. Oh, oh my. So what's your lowest number there, Chelsea? Why do I go by my lowest? What's your lowest number? Two. Did you beat a two? Yeah. What's your highest number then, Allison? 15. I'm only saying this because you guys can't see each other's numbers. And what did you get 
Oh, did you beat a 15? Yes. What'd you get? 18. I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> it just happened. Well, if... We went for the wishbone and she got the bigger half. Yeah, that's what happened. If Fogram had grabbed it... <laughs> Shub Z would have won. Shub Nagurth would have won because the compact was made and not broken. And, and you even used Eldritch Blast during the round. I needed to. Of course. <laughs> And Shub Nagurath would have then used Fogrim to become a god upon the plane. And Shub Nagurath would have then been able to acquire paladins and clerics as needed. And Shub Nagurath had trusted Nightscale, the black dragon warlock, as its prime person upon the plains to acquire this very powerful artifact of rage and anger. Good thing Shub I so good. <laughs> really, really, really wanted Tessikar to acquire mm. the gauntlet of Durgeddon the Black and usher in an age of darkness and goat fucking for ages to come. <laughs> Always that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad I didn't make you eat the berry now. <laughs> but Tessikar <laughs> forsook Shub Nagorath in the most crazy of ways because Eldith was there because there needed to be five of you to reclaim the fist. It's the only way the gem could be dissolved. You stoop down, you pick up the gauntlet, you feel Shub Nagurath way off in the distance, unable to impact or affect you. The compact was broken. You are, you are ill matters now. And ill matter does not like the gauntlet. That gauntlet is a thing of hate and pain and anger and rage and the causing of suffering to others. It is not the taking on of suffering itself, but he has no care about what you do with the gauntlet. So what do you do with the gauntlet, Tessigar? I study the gauntlet and then I look over at Oscar. Yeah, I'm holding my hand out just like this. <laughs> <laughs> I say, as the offspring of Durgeddon, I believe this belongs to you. And I pass the gauntlet to Oscar. I take the gauntlet. Yeah, initially by holding out a fist, which was really confusing. <laughs> yeah, because the end has to be open. It's, it's not gonna, a cestus. I was going to bro, I was gonna, oh, I was gonna bro <laughs> fist. Just, bah. As he takes the gauntlet, he accidentally causes the finger and the thumb to snap in half of you. Vent. No, just no! kidding. <laughs> no, Too that, soon. Nothing I broke. I don't want to go. Nothing broke. <laughs> All of you need to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, no. Acid. Right. Even, even me? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the right. The, the aside. Yeah, you may have advantage. Is this a saving throw? Yes. Any of us who have bless, so just me and Melusine, we ha automatically have a d4. Oh, and Roka. And Roka. I'm going to use my bardic inspiration. Okay. Did you beat a 14? 49 points of acid damage. Oh! oh! Did you beat a 14? Yeah. 24 points of acid damage. Did you beat a 14? Oh, I should have reached. Yes, I did. 24 points of da acid damage. Reaction on Kenny Dodge? Zero points of damage. <laughs> nice. Yes. Rogues are sweet. 24 points of acid damage. Oh, yeah. 24 points of acid damage for Roga? Natural Oh, is a bonus action doesn't count as a reaction, correct? Otherwise, I'm very dead. <laughs> we have healers. Oh. <laughs> Just give up all of your white gems. Roka is also <laughs> no longer with us. Just give him all of your gems. <laughs> Just give him all That's of all of them. <laughs> okay. Chelsea has five gems. Not all of them white. Now, granted, as you stooped to pick up the, the gauntlet, this is when the blast happened. So rather than kindly hand the gauntlet to Oscar, nice. what did you do instead... That allowed you to not be in the vicinity of the acid when everybody else had to make saving throws. As I was stooping down to grab the gauntlet, yeah. as soon as my hand touched it, I flicked my hand. <gasps> and it's like, a port key. <laughs> yeah. I uh, kind of like half grabbed it and flicked. Nope, that's an action. That's an action? Mm -hmm. I'm going to... Sorry, Oscar, you're going to have to wait for the gauntlet. <laughs> I'm going to grab the gauntlet. Okay, wait. The storyteller says... And thus it was that after Tessikar passed the gauntlet to Oscar, he was engulfed in acid and dissolved utterly and died. Oh, I don't know if I can do this Mater voice again. <laughs> it's not Mater. You're the little kid. Oh, 
right. I forgot who I was. You, you stop forgetting these things. We Your play pretty consistently. Down. I don't use this person <laughs> that often. That's why I have so many very gems. Fair. Okay. Very fair. Um, excuse me. That's not how it went. I'm sorry. What? Uh, if I remember correctly, Tessicar grabbed the gauntlet and then Misty stepped the fuck out of there. Oh. I remembered someone dying. <laughs> yeah, that comes at the end of the story, lady. That was the dragon. Fine. Fine. <laughs> Tessicar Misty stepped away. The acid washed over everything else, dissolving a pile of gold gems and much of the gathered throng. Can I use my reaction now? <laughs> yes. Oh, wait. What did you want to use your reaction to do? Rebuke the violent for the damage on Foggy. What's rebuke the violent do? That's the one where it's you can use your channel divinity to rebuke those who use violence immediately after an attacker within 30 feet deals damage with an attack against a creature other than you. You use your reaction to force the attacker to make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the at- attacker takes radiant damage equal to the damage it just su- sure. just dealt. On a successful, it takes half the damage. Okay, it's successful on the saves because I got a 16 and I think that beats you. Yes. Okay. Spell save DC, right? Yeah. Yeah. So oh. how much damage do you do? 12. That radiant damage strikes the dragon. It's flying there in front of you. Tessicar tosses Oscar the gauntlet. What do you do? I snatch it out of midair. Sure. Put it on my hand. Okay. What do you do? Does it do anything once I have it on? You put on the gauntlet. And it, <laughs> What do you want to do? I, does me putting on the gauntlet do Yes, the gauntlet that? now speaks to you and says, Oh, thank you. I've been waiting for someone to wear with me for so long. <laughs> Can get, Damn it. Can you get really vague? When someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. <laughs> I am a god. Okay, so now that I have the gauntlet on, I'm going to now make myself very big. Boom, you're big. So I'm giant. Well, no, you're large. Large. Am I larger than the dragon? No. Because I want to punch the dragon with the gauntlet. <gasps> the dragon's like 30 feet away. Ah, oh, damn. You can walk there. Well, you've already taken an action this turn, so you can move up and you can move over and stand on the shore in front of the dragon. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to... I can't attack it with a bonus action? No. Okay. So I'm right there with the dragon. You're standing there, large and in charge. Dragon's flying in front of you. Yes. You're wearing the gauntlet of Durgett in the black. Yes. All right. What is everybody else doing? Is the dragon up still? Dragon's flying in the air, yes. Okay. I'm going to cast Dissident Whispers on the dragon at level third level. Please make a wisdom saving throw. Uh, 12. That is not enough. Okay. What is everybody else doing? I'll just blast. All right. Go for it. Yay. 24. I actually hit something this time. 26. Right. Roll your damage. What's everybody else doing? I also want to Eldritch Blast it. All right. Go for it. That doesn't do anything to the creature, though. Because Shubsy? Fuck Shubsy. Oh, I know, okay. right? Um, I gave you my crossbow. That's my only like far-ranged weapon. Besides Darn. Darn. <laughs> Can I throw my hand axe at it, I guess? Go ahead. I don't want to, but I'm going to. Which one are you throwing? Throw Troy. Troy's gone forever. What? Roll your, roll your oh, attack okay. plus after, your damage. After I throw it. Yeah. 14. Eldeth, what are you doing? I don't have anything long range. All right. Because Oscar's standing out front right now. Yeah. So I'm just going to cast Sanctuary on him. Cool. What do I get? Nothing can attack you unless it makes a wisdom save. Go for it. What did you roll for damage there? Well, does it a 22 hit? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, 15. The dragon says on its turn, Shabnagorath will have its revenge. I forswear it. Come away, Fogrim. We will plot together. And Tur- then you, of course, throw your axe at it. <laughs> and <laughs> say, Tired of animals talking to me. Leave me alone. <laughs> Anybody else got a word for the dragon? Don't come to the Blueberry Festival. <laughs> you're uninvited. <laughs> We say we invite everybody, but you're not invited. <laughs> Tessicar looks the dragon in the eye and says, the darkness is rebuked here. Leave. Ooh. You may have a gem. Ah, there's a <laughs> useless. <laughs> it's useless. Oh, <laughs> I use my bardic. The back. dragon dives beneath the waves, never to be seen again. Yeah. By this party, but does grow up to be a big ass kicker in trouble for other people. Is it just a young dragon? Yeah. It's just a young oh. black dragon. Shit. <laughs> I mean, I was okay. Your damaged boat is on the shore and you have saved the Forge of Fury from the depredations of Nightscale, the black dragon, 
and the adventure as it is written here is complete. But it would behoove me to have a denouement for all of my lovely characters. Aaron, the last thing for Oscar was he has a title as earned from his time in the Forge of Fury. And from this day forth, he is not just known as Oscar. He's known as Oscar the Black. Cool. Can I offer a little change to that? By all means. Oscar Blackfist. Yes. Oscar Blackfist. Cool. Because he carries the fist of Dirk Ed the Black. I like it. And right? he's, he's a black dwarf. Hereafter, Fogrim is known as... I had a serious one written down, and then I had a not serious one. All right, let's hear the not serious one, because that's we got to hear that. Like we, all, like we all wanted him to be Oscar the Fister. I was going to go a little further than that and just be Fogrim the Goat Fire. But... <laughs> 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 okay, but nobody, of course, knew, no, knows yeah. that. No, so. no, no. But you're never going to live that one down. Fogrim would like to be known as Fogrim Orkslayer. Fogrim Fallen after his grandfather's name, Ork Doom. Yes, I love it. It's great. It is recorded henceforth in the annals of time as Fogrim Orkslayer. Who's next? Melusine the Blue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad now I think I originally was thinking Fogrim the Red, but I like my other choice now because everyone else is going for colors, apparently. We'll just be a rainbow. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like She that. managed to skip the blueberry part, the berry part. She's like, no, 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 just blue. Just, the just blue. I like it. That's lovely. <clears throat> From here on out, Eldith is known as Eldith the Shielder. Oh, I like that. Tessacar is now known as Tessacar the Prodigal. Yeah, that's great. Lovely all around. You make your way. There is thousands of gold melted. Some of it, a lot of it melted from the acid (laughs) on this island, plus magical items, plus other things. You make your way out of the Forge of Fury. You've dealt with all of the threats therein, and you're not accosted at all as you gather up these arm loads, wagon loads, boat loads of gold, gems, silver, up to the top of the forge, into the readout itself, and away. You take back the body of Chumby Numblefoot to his his parents. And you spend some time at the Numblefoot farm, where the berries of temptation were gathered at a riverbank. Where a roof was thatched. That's good. Where lunch was almost thrown up. <laughs> It's time, it's time, he says. It's time. The eggs are going to hatch quickly. Four gleaming rock hard white eggs and one small black egg are sitting next to the hearth and you're all gathered up next to your eggs. You know your egg individually because you remember the colors and the striations and how they looked. Marie Claire, do you remember what your egg looked like? My egg looked like a robin's egg. Like a blue color with speckled dots. Cool. It starts to crack. A fissure forms. I'm going to sing it a song. An adorable little owlbear tumbles free, creeling for hunger. The elder, elder Numblefoot has food and like d- digestible crackers sort of things for the, for the owlbears to eat and... It's like, it's like dried jerky. Here's some canapes for you. <laughs> you no, know, he's like, you have to soften it and then spit it into your owlbear's mouth. That's the best way to do it. Of course, you know, yeah, that's how you do that. Here's some hors d'oeuvres for you, little one. <laughs> and you sing a song because you were singing. Well, I, I I started to, but then I started chewing. So it's like, <laughs> this would be annoying to the rest of your family if the other eggs had not started rocking and cracking as well. What does Melusine name her little owl bear pet, owl bear friend? Oliver. Oliver. <laughs> That's funny. He likes liver pate. Ooh. <laughs> Froggy, your egg starts to rock back and forth. What does it look like? The egg itself's got a little like robin's egg, so it's got like blue specks on okay, it. Okay, blue yeah. specks just hey. like melusines. Yeah. Cool. Cool, they're twins. The yeah. twin owlbear falls cracking out of the egg. All it's all feathers are all wet and sticky and whatnot, and it creels with hunger and the guy's there. Yeah, of course, just put it in your mouth, chew it up, and then spit it in the owlbear's mouth. 
Well, yeah. So I do that. So I take it, whatever the stuff is, and like make a very sour face as I do it because it's not as good as I thought it was going to be. And, and then, what do you name your owlbear? Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> Owl Alexander. Alexander. <laughs> Owlver and Owl Alexander. <laughs> well, I've got one now. <laughs> well, there we go. Yes, it is now Tessa. And I, I would like egg. to add that my mine has a last name of Stonehammer. Well, they all will. Yeah, I know. Just Can saying. I just I want to add that because it's still wet from the egg goop. Mm. I'm gonna f- fix his feathers oh, into he, it. A he mohawk. already has a little mohawk. Oh, it's yeah. like a little thing. <laughs> <for sure. laughs> that just stands to reason. I mean, oh yay! <laughs> <laughs> and Tessica, your egg starts to rock. What does your egg look like? My egg's got some red veining. Oh, oh going. my! <laughs> yours, sh- yours should be the invert of mine. Yeah, so mine's white with red veining, and it just like swirls up the lit egg cracks and the owlbear falls out what color is this owlbear's eyes orange orange weird okay <laughs> it falls out it's dead because you no know, owlbear has orange eyes and you're really sad no just kidding it falls out it's curling with hunger and he's the little gnome's there to help you right away and he's passing you pieces of dried meat for you to chew and masticate with your saliva and soften up for the little owlbear to eat and raw flesh first next and he's like quickly hurry the, the, um, and, the, and the little one will bond to you and you'll be its friend. Great. <laughs> <laughs> do you do it? I, yeah, I chew the jerky. And what do you name your owlbear? Owl Olivia. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's going to keep going. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Eldith, the egg rocks and rocks and rocks, falls over cracks, and an owlbear fights to break free of it uh, with his or her is it a boy or a girl i don't think it has gender sure why not i mean there's it's like a mule okay that makes perfect sense okay the owlbear breaks free and uh rustles its reddish feathers and fur let's describe what the owlbear looks like for you instead (laughs) he has mostly brown feathers but in amongst the brown feathers, there's tufts of red feathers. Cool. And fur as well, because it's mm-hmm. an owl and a bear. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And what's its name? Alex. <laughs> so we got Alexander and Alex? Yeah, because Alex is a gender neutral name. That's true. Very true. You have a point. <laughs> yeah. Who can argue with that? <laughs> names are awful. Um, <laughs> We could have gone with egg themed names, but we went with owls. And- Actually, I love it. I want to change my my sure. owl's name. Yeah, Olive. Olive. <laughs> like an olive. But we have an Oliver and an oh, Olivia. Oh God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Olivia. <laughs> oh, we could go with a bear that, pun. We'll keep with Alex. I really do like Alex. Okay, because then there's two of each kind of an Alex and Alexander. Alicia. <laughs> I thought about owl. Alo- Aloe Alo- vera. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. Aloe vera. <laughs> I like that. Aloe vera. All right. Yeah. What are you going with? I'm going to go with aloe vera. Aloe vera. That's definitely a gender neutral name yeah. term as well. Okay, perfect. I hope he's a little green. <laughs> and uh, the, heat, the little gnome is there. Of course, everybody else is still busily chewing meat and spitting it into their owl bear's mouth. <laughs> so. It's right there. Tons of meat ready to chew up and spit. Mm-hmm. Do you? Yeah. Okay. You need to make sure aloe vera stays nourished. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> the black egg. I hate you people so much sometimes. <laughs> the black egg does not move. The black egg sits there. It has not rocked. It has not cracked. It has not moved. What is there anything special or different about this, or is it just like black? Is it a polished black, like a black mirror? It's a matte black. Matte black. So it doesn't really reflect the light. Like bounces off it harmlessly. It's very small, and it doesn't move or crack. What do you do? Can I do like a medicine check on it to see if it? Well, well describe for me what your medicine check is entailing. What are you physically doing? Let's see if. I could maybe tell if there's any signs of life from within the egg. Okay, how? What do you do? Kind of put it up to my ear. You definitely Listen. hear movement as soon as you put it to your ear. It starts. It starts with like lots of frantic moving. You like you can definitely hear something on there that's slowing and sl- like getting more sluggish as you listen. Is the egg cold to the touch? No, it's nice and warm. I don't know what I would do because I don't want to crack it open myself because that seems counterproductive. Yeah. 
definitely feels like maybe there's something definitely living inside that's having trouble breaking its own egg. What does the gnome think? He's like, I don't know. I'm busy. That's a weird fucked up thing. I don't know. Like, that's not an owl bear. So whatever. What a horrible midwife. Okay. It's called animal husbandry. (laughs) I can't. Because midwife and husband <laughs> yeah. dream. I'm going to tap it a, the egg a couple times. Does anything happen? Oh, yeah. You get you feel a tap back. It grows weaker. And that, that third tap is it's hardly there. I got to break this egg open. Yeah, you do. Yep. Okay. I carefully try and crack the egg a little bit to help. Okay. What, how do you do that? There is a, dry, a giant frying pan off to this. No, just kidding. <laughs> Good eats. Wow. Good eats. Um, I'm going to take That's so bad. the back of one of my daggers, like the blunt end, and just kind of sure. gently tap it. Yeah, nothing's going there. Just gently tapping it, and it's hard. This, this thing is solid. Okay, hmm. I tap it a little bit harder. Yeah, it's still nothing. Nothing at all. <laughs> I have war pick. <laughs> that was not with enough meat in your mouth. I have war... Oh, hang on. <laughs> Don't, don't put that in your mouth. That's no, don't. That's so It's happening. What was that? I have war prep. <laughs> she put that oh, yeah. sugar cookie in her mouth. Like a whole bunch of it. Why? It's like all sugar. In 20 minutes, we will not be able to understand Allison any longer. <laughs> I'll vibrate off my chair. Turn my dagger around. I use the... Oh, wow. Yeah, flat absolutely. Part. Okay. The flat the part. The flat part. Right. And I give it a hefty smack. <laughs> Yeah, you you lay down on it with a hefty, hefty cinch smack, but not, it doesn't crack. What the? <laughs> Can I Eldritch <laughs> blast it? <laughs> no, you're, bu- you're busy. You're busy. <laughs> I don't. Does he have to keep it warm? No, it's super warm because it's sitting right in front of the yeah, hearth. It's... it's been rotated nicely. The thing's <laughs> it's grown weak. Dude, you got to figure something out. What are you going to do? I guess I'm going to have to go ham on it. I'm going to try and... Just come down on it. Perfect. As hard as I can. Stay yes. with the flat side. Yes. I do not wish to cleft said egg in twain. Yes. <laughs> Everyone pauses and <sighs> notes as Oscar starts going to town on this egg. And the first few hits, he's he's like, he's he's careful. He's unsure. And he's starting to get more and more robust in his swings. And he cries out at some point. What's going on here? He's hitting it harder and harder and harder. And finally he says, You little shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cracks it so hard. This oh, is no. like a brutal ogre stab oh. sort of crack. And he finally, there's a crack that appears across the top of the egg and the rest of it striates and a weird, sodden, dark form falls into Oscar's arms. His dagger clinks and lands on the stone floor next to the hearth, covered in goop and baby egg stuff, next to this hard, thick, leathery shell that it could not pierce at all. As a little tiny creature that's maybe a fifth the size of an owl bear lands in your lap with the head of a bear and the body of an owl. Oh, I got the inverse. <laughs> you got a bear owl. <laughs> hey, that's a bear owl. <laughs> and Tessicar, you know that Tessicar just made that up off the top of his head. Like, I know what that is. Everything else is an owl bear. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you name your bear owl? Bernstein. <laughs> Bernstein bear. Wait, Bernstein or Berenstain? Bernstein. Before In the it inception changed. version? Yeah. <laughs> Before it changed. She's a little Before changed. the Matrix never split. It was never Bernstein. It's, it's a lie. Awesome. The whole life <laughs> is a lie. They snuck into my house <laughs> and changed my 1982 copy of the Berenstain Bears. They did. <laughs> <laughs> no, it just proved that um, someone time traveled. No, this is this is actually just Dark City or Delt K. Def concepts. of we're, We just changed something. We altered something. And you return to Blazing Dell with wagon loads of goods. You rented wagons from the Numblefoots, brought them back to the forge, heaped things into it. Oscar spends time with family members, getting to know them as they work the forge. But they have found 
that the magical anima of it has grown weaker and it is less able to put out these magical items, artifacts, and weapons, given that the fist is now in the rightful heir's hand, and that hand is not as violent or retributive as his father's was. You return to Blazing Dell, where Baron Althon is like, there they are, take them! And the piles and wagon loads of gold (laughs) has the mayor in your favor instead. And there at the jail, outside of it, stands Lucille. Hello, Eldith. Hi, Lucille. Very glad you all made it back. Thank you so much for taking care of Roka. Yeah, that was strange. Just poof. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, she has some interesting attributes. (laughs) Yes. Hello, family of Eldith. Hey. (laughs) Hey, um... Hi, Lucille. Oh, hello. You are? Tessigar. Oh, my. (laughs) Fargum's heart just falls. It's okay, Foggy. We'll find you somebody else. I don't want somebody else. Tessigar walks over to Lucille. Care for a drink? Um, I think actually that Foggum, Frogum, would really like to go for a drink. He fought hard and all in your name. Slayed many orcs for you. And then he walks away, gives you a nod, and goes and starts chatting up somebody else that he espies. Somewhere down the road. Which is in another adventure. Yep. As Tessikar makes his leave, perhaps with Eldith or not. She's still pretty upset at him. Oh, come on. He hasn't hasn't even said anything about that. That's fair. We're at the end. (laughs) Do you go off on an upset adventure or do you just, do you go your separate ways? As I walk over to talk to this lady. Yeah. I look over at Eldith and I just give her a smile. Mouth. I'm sorry, and give a little head nod to come and join me as we walk towards the pub. And she does. That's all she needed was acknowledgement. Aw, guys. We're twins. So cute. They, they drink long and into the night, and is it Tessikar who initiates the drunken hug? Yes. Is Melusine in the background Barting smiling it. and <laughs> yeah, does it <laughs> awkwardly singing a song? Awkwardly. She's not a good bard. I thought that was very clear. <laughs> She's a great bard. You're a great As bard. As Melusine starts to strum, Tessicar drunkenly starts to sing along. And surprisingly, I'm not going to sing for you in Tessicar okay. voice, but he sounds like Frank Sinatra, hidden talent of Tessicar. <laughs> because. Because. You're a crooner. Oh, okay. just because. All just right. because. All right. Cool. One thing I neglected to do was you Misty stepped away. And your sister Eldeth lay there hurt and battered by the acid that was struck to her by the dragon. You move over. You see her in pain. I would have walked over. Or as soon as there is no more immediate threat, I would have been right beside her. And what do you do? I reach out and on her head, place my hand, the ill matter hand, and I lay on hands and I pray for all the healing powers of ill matter to take on my sister's pain in the fashion of ill matter and the eye that was upon eldeth's forehead widens visibly (laughs) and if the player would like the eye to be removed that will happen in the story right now if you'd like it to be and if you'd like the eye to remain and be a source of mystery for adventure to come you can let it remain i want to know what it does (laughs) You gotta keep it then. Like, does it shoot a laser at some point? Like, I just want to know. <laughs> it's like the the boom boom guy from Avatar: The Last Airbender with that's the, what I was oh, thinking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Cyclops or whatever. Yeah, or maybe it gives me advantage on insight because it's my third eye. Possible. Wah, yeah. Wah, wah. Do, we... Do you want it gone or left as a mystery? I want it left as a mystery because I want. Cool. It. Then you do not take on the eye of Grumsh. You just heal Eldeth. Of all but the single missing hit point. Ah, damn. (laughs) Fogram. Lucille has been rebuffed by hot Tessikar, 
who seemed to seems to have like some sort of cool performance skill now too, which I'm shocked at. He's full of surprises. Yeah, six pack abs, cool <laughs> cut off shorts. Everything is hot about Tessa Carr. <laughs> I was secret. I was so old for this whole campaign. I can be secretly hot, okay? <laughs> I'm secretly Joey from Friends. Nice. Thank you. What happens with Lucille? Frogram kind of sheepishly. <laughs> no, no, say it right. Everybody keeps calling him Frogram now for some reason. <laughs> Did I say Frogram? Yes. yes. <laughs> so it is. started with me. Jeez. Sorry. Pogram sheepishly goes over to Lucille. Yep. And goes, uh, are, are you working right now? How does Lucille respond? That she gets off in like an hour, I okay. guess. And Frogram apologizes. Just like, I just want to apologize. You don't have to guess with that. That I'm sorry. And that I've changed. The fact that you're able to say you're sorry shows me that you've changed. I forgive you. But don't you ever kill orcs for me. You kill orcs for you. I kill orcs for me. Understood. (laughs) And they hold hands and head off to the bar and get roaring drunk with the rest of the stone hammers. At the pub, I sneakily like pour some things into my... Bucket, bucket of the barbarians. Just to test that when it comes into, Absolutely. and we share that, and like yeah. secretly, because you should do that in a pub. Yeah, so it's good times. The next day dawns blearily and hung overy. The five stone hammers awaken various different parts of the town of Blazing Dell to the roar of an angry black dragon seeking revenge. But that (laughs) is not the tale of the Forge of Fury. That is another tale to be told by a different storyteller in a different inn at a different time. But for now, this story is done. Does that mean I can get another bear? (laughs) (laughs) Durkhan says, Bar's closed. Ding, ding. Masters at the bar, please. Ah, yay. yay. We finished. Raise your glass and drink with the enemy. Raise your glass and sing with the enemy. And I'm not gonna do this on my own. This concludes this episode of Tavern Tales, a curated Dungeons & Dragons 5e game set in the Tales of the Yawning Portal Adventure module by Wizards of the Coast. Our intro and outro music is the song Tavern Tales by the Bad Billy Band. You can find out more about the Bad Billy Band on iTunes or at www.badbillyband.com or follow them on Twitter at Bad Billy Band. Thanks for listening. Please feel free to leave us a review on iTunes or find us on Twitter at Tavern underscore Tales. We'll be back next week with more of the adventure. Tessicar is going to go to the bow of the boat. Yep. And he is going to... Curtsy? Very... No. He, not, no. No, we're <laughs> not doing boat puns. <laughs> no. <laughs> curtsy a boat pun? Because I went to the bow. You went to bow. Oh, see. It took me a second. I got the bow. Bowing and curtsy. Yeah, fuck me. (laughs) (laughs) That escalated quickly. I'm going to keep all of that. That's some good podcasting.